Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! I'm delighted to be joined by the poet, rapper, activist, man of many parts, a Carla, who's just got this rather brilliant book out called Race and Class in the Ruins of Empire or Natives. I think is the main title. Is that right? Is, 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 is that right? There we go. Yeah. Trying to give you a pump, a, 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 a bit of a, 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 a promo there, but the camera wasn't, didn't seem to be working. But nonetheless, we know what it's all. Uh, we know what it's all, uh, all, all about. Bestseller, I believe, already. Yeah, on, yeah, uh, yeah, apparently so. Yeah, it came out last week. Now, um, so much to talk about and um, I was very moved actually by the extract that was I think in the Guardian over yeah, the yeah. over the weekend where you talked about when you were being racially abused I think you were five at the time is that right yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and and you, you came home uh, and started to talk to your mum and then for the first time you sort of realized that you know, you had a white mum and you're black, and this sort of had a big impact on your... Well, I think the idea of, of racial identity first occurred to me at that point. When, when, when you're a kid and you're that young, you're just a child. And I think what, what that... One of the reasons I recount that incident in there and other incidents, you know, through growing up, getting put in a special needs class for kids who don't speak English, you know, other... You know, just... Because you were a bright challenges. kid, it's absolutely extraordinary. Yeah. Well, you... no, it isn't, actually. This, this is, it comes back to the larger discussion of the way in which the British education system is very much stratified by class. We are not interested in turning kids in Easter House and Glasgow into rocket scientists, into the next Roger Penrose. And so this inevitably produces conflicts with children who are too bright or get ideas above their station. And so I sort of fitted into that narrative. And so I was put in this, this special needs group, which isn't very uncommon. That We used to have schools for the uh, mentally subnormal. They were then going into schools for the educationally subnormal. There's a lot of good literature on sort of post-war British education that deals with the conflict between, I suppose, the ambitions of incoming migrants to the country with the reality of a very heavily class stratified education system. And that's some of what I try to highlight in the book. And uh, I mean, I just talked to the education minister, Anne Milton, mm. about the appallingly few sort of black people who are getting into Oxford, but it's not just Oxford, actually. The same, it's not quite as bad at Cambridge, but it's bad, and it's bad at lots of the other top universities. Are they just... What's going well, wrong? I mean, I don't know a whole load about the admissions policies of those particular universities, in fairness to them, but there is lots of good literature. So, for example, Bristol and Warwick University did national studies looking at every school in the country a couple of years ago. And, again, they looked at how... Uh, so, if you've got the same grades as other students, what is the likelihood of you getting entered for higher tier GCSE when adjusted for race, when adjusted for class? People can read the conclusions. They looked at... They did what they call blind marking, which is something they do all over the world. How do teachers assess their students' intelligence in the classroom versus their actual test scores? Again, people can read these results. The Department for Education have stuff looking at disproportionate exclusions, etc. So there's lots of good literature out there to suggest that, as I've said before, we have a really heavily class stratified education system. What do we do about it? Um, well, one of the things we could do is have... Um, so we currently have, you know, standardised testing, but we have no standardised criteria for GCSE entrance. Your teacher basically gets to decide how smart they think you are or you're not. What should happen, really, is GCSE entrance should be based solely on... So the, the discrimination, test in your view, starts much earlier than the moment not, people apply to university? Not, not in my view, in the empirical... <laughs> no, no, sure, but data, I mean... In, 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 those, in those studies, I didn't write those studies, which is why I'm, which is why I'm quoting them. And, and, and so it, we rely if, too much... You're saying we rely too much on the subjective judgement of teachers? No, I'm saying that the, the challenge, when you have a, a, a hierarchical society, the challenge is how you reproduce that and tell yourself that you're not reproducing it. If a kid is particularly bright and he lives in Easter House in Glasgow, he obviously does, or she, obviously does not have the same life opportunities as a kid in the south of Kensington. But in the, fact, surely the big, the big issue for class is private education. Of course. Seven percent of kids go to get sent to private schools, and yet a massive amount of the top place at university and the top jobs in the establishment go that, to the kids from those schools. And that's exactly. where class comes from. And, 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 and people do not spend tens of thousands of pounds a year to send their kids to Harrow or Eton to expect a kid to get the same quality of education at a state school. Obviously not, otherwise they wouldn't pay for it. Um, and so I think even the policy you were discussing earlier, the apprenticeships policy... Or these T-levels, yeah. Essentially, yeah. That is obviously not designed for kids who've gone to Eton and Harrow. So it is, it is obviously designed for state kids to get working-class jobs. And so I think we have to be honest about some of this history and, and the difficulty of managing an economy. And I think this... Isolating it just to Oxbridge is kind of missing the entire point of the bigger discussion. Um, look, we, there's so much I want to talk to you about, and we haven't got an enormous amount of time. You, I think, 
take the view that a reintroduction of stop and search for knives, because obviously knife crime yeah. in London <laughs> nationally is a huge issue. You, I'm, you... I'm so glad you said nationally. London last year was the eighth most violent police district mm. in Britain. So we may want to ask why London is being compared to New York mm -hmm. and not to Glasgow, not to Liverpool. Places Lovely that have had... Glasgow references today. No, I'm half Scottish, <laughs> right? So it's, it's fascinating to me that as someone who's half Scottish and half black London, that I'm associated with the problems in London, but not with my Scottish cousins in Glasgow. I'm not saying Intelligence targeted stop and search when you have information is one thing. Ethnically targeted stop and search leads to stupid stuff like Daniel Kaluuya, one of the most successful mm. actors in this country, getting dragged off a bus and strip searched. The last mm. time I was pulled over was six months ago. I teach Shakespeare and African history for a living. Yes. And what was specifically said was gang members drive cars like this. And I thought, well, that's what happens when, you, when gang crime in one part of the country, even though it exists in less than 0.005% of a particular group, is, F, is, F, is made ethnically specific and no, another part is No, isn't. it's incredibly yeah. frustrating, but unfortunately, I've got to say goodbye thanks to Akala, Tom, and.